Namaskar. Myself, Professor Jamala. I am here with my another lecture on mechanics. In this lecture, I will explain the conservation of angular momentum for a single particle. After doing this topic or during the topic, we will discuss that what is the meaning of angular momentum, then what is spin angular momentum, what is orbital angular momentum, how is it related to the uh, rotary inertia or the moment of inertia, then uh, what, how the angular momentum is conserved, what are the conditions under which angular momentum is conserved. Further, what is the importance of this angular momentum or you can say what is the practical use of the law of conservation of angular momentum. So, first of all, if I talk about uh, what is angular momentum, I will try to explain it uh, in a physical manner uh, with the help of a diagram that how can I define it. Uh, if you remember, I told you that what is linear momentum, linear momentum was physically defined as the strength, strength of, an, of, a, of a moving object which it, it can show to some another object to which it will interact during its motion or collide during its motion. Similarly, if we talk about the angular momentum, then uh, suppose you have a particle here, this is an object say of mass m and this is some reference point join the two and let it be position vector is r corresponding to this reference point b now this body is rotating this body is rotating. Now in uh, considering the infinitesimal displacement of this body such that I am approximating it by a linear momentum by a linear displacement and so its linear momentum is mv. Suppose I join or I complete a parallelogram then R is directed by BA and MV is directed by AC. So if I talk about the physical meaning of angular momentum, I can say that area of the parallelogram B A C B is the strength of angular momentum. So, as we say, the linear momentum was the strength of uh, of an object moving in a straight line which it can show or which it can impress on another particle to which it will collide similarly you can say the area of the parallelogram which is constructed through a line reference ba and its linear momentum is known as the angular momentum and what about its axis if we draw a line from B or if we draw a line which is perpendicular to a plane containing R as well as MV then this is called the axis of rotation. This will become the axis of rotation. Further uh, this is also the property of angular momentum that when the 
two body collide then angular momentum before the collision and after the collision will remain same suppose uh, suppose you are having two bodies these are uh, rotating in such a way that this body is coming to this way and this body is coming to this way suppose these collide at this point and after the collision this these are repelled then again the angular momentum will remain conserved it is its linear momentum suppose it is it is its linear momentum m1 v1 m2 v2 then if i talk about the angular momentum of particle 1 then it will be represented by the area of this parallelogram and if i talk about the angular momentum of particle 2 then it will be like this it will represent angular momentum of 2 and it will represent angular momentum of 1 and naturally there will be axis of the 2 these will be the axis of these two angular momentums and after the collision if they repel then their angular momentum will remain conserved similarly there may be the situation uh, where the particle collide and they move in the same direction then again the angular momentum will remain conserved so finally uh, we define the angular momentum it, it is defined by l is equal to r cross p where what is p p is the linear momentum and r is the radial distance of the object from the reference point here b is the reference point and at a we have our object so this is the uh, radial distance here r is vector p is vector so it is the radial distance or r is the radius vector from the reference point to the particle so this is the definition of angular momentum l is equal to r cross p now uh, we will also define some other concepts first of all is angular velocity suppose you have some particle which is at point a and after certain time it reaches to b describing an angle delta theta this is actually the angular displacement of this object a moving to object moving to the point b so angular displacement is delta theta in time delta t so angular displacement in unit time delta theta upon delta t and this delta theta delta t when delta t tends to 0 is known as angular velocity and this is denoted by omega okay now we will see what is the relation between angular velocity and linear velocity
for that uh, suppose your particle is rotating about an axis this is an axis and here is the particle which is rotating and let it be the reference point it is a it is b this is the reference point so take it as r let it be r after certain time it reaches to b such that this angle is delta theta join it and this angle is also delta theta this angle is theta what this angle will be what is this line this is the axis of rotation and this axis of rotation is perpendicular to this plane which is containing r as well as this mv so this angle will be pi by 2 you can have a relation between r capital r and r r is equal to r sin theta further uh, if this is delta r suppose this is delta r then delta r is equal to this delta r is r delta theta because this will also be r this is r so and this angular displacement is delta theta so delta r is equal to r delta theta or delta r delta t is r delta theta delta t what is r r is r sin theta and delta theta delta t is omega delta r delta t may be written as when delta t tends to 0 it is v and in vector notation you can write v is equal to r cross omega because here i can take a unit vector Now, if this B point, reference point approaches to O, when B approaches to O, this R will become small r and in that case, delta R, delta T is equal to R, delta theta, delta T and when delta T tends to 0, v is equal to r omega so this is a relation between uh, linear velocity and angular velocity and whenever a body is rotating about an axis this is not necessary that that axis passes through the body itself it may pass through the body itself or body may rotate or you can say revolute about some other axis <coughs> so there are two types of angular momentum one is when the body is rotating about an axis which is passing through its own center then uh, center of mass then we will say that it is the spin angular momentum and if a body is uh, uh, the example of this is the rotation rotation of earth earth rotates about its own axis so there it is the case of spin angular momentum and if a body rotates about some axis which is not passing through it but it is rotating about it or revoluting about it then we say that it is the case of uh, orbital angular momentum so there may be two types of momentum
now we can uh, show that there is a relation between angular momentum and moment of inertia relation between angular momentum and moment of inertia as you know this that linear momentum is defined as p is equal to mv so linear momentum is related to mass of an object similarly the angular momentum is related to its moment of inertia or we can say that it is rotary inertia so how will we see it how uh, will we prove it l is defined as r cross p l is equal to r cross this p is uh, mass into velocity so it is m v or it is r i am not putting the symbol for vector notation it is understood m and this v may be replaced by r cross omega it is in uh, it is for the case when your axis of rotation is somewhere outside the body m r cross r cross omega m it is r dot r omega minus r dot omega r m r square omega because r dot omega is zero because you are considering the case when your uh, axis of rotation is outside the body so you see that l is equal to m r square omega so l is directly related to moment of inertia therefore in vector notation i may write l is equal to i cross omega so as the linear momentum is concerned with the mass and it is concerned with the strength of a body power of a body which it can insert which it can impose on another body to which it will collide similarly in angular momentum you can say that this is the correct this characterizes the rotary inertia rotary inertia means the inertia or its strength which uh, try to maintain it in its state when it is undergoing a rotation so this is the relation between uh, angular momentum and moment of inertia now we come to uh, the last part in which we will show the conservation so we come to conservation of angular momentum i will give you a very beautiful example of relation of angular momentum and moment of inertia after this conservation of angular momentum first of all we will define l is equal to r cross p where p means mv now what is dl dt derivative of l derivative of r cross mv is dr dt cross mv plus i may write m outside r cross dv dt so it is v cross mv plus m r cross a this v cross mv will be zero and r cross m a it is r cross f where what is r 
r is the distance or r is the radial vector from the point of reference to the object. So what is this r cross f? f is the net force. So r cross f is the moment of the net force. r cross f represents torque, represents moment of force. That is, it is torque. Okay. Now, suppose I say that R and F are parallel. Then what will happen? R is parallel to F implies R cross F is 0. And if R cross F is 0, 2 implies dl dt 0 this is first condition this is condition 1 situation 1 so no change in angular momentum if force is in the direction of line of action. There is no change if force is in the direction of line joining the object to the point of reference. There is a one beautiful example of this. This is sun and this is earth. It is the this law that there is no change in angular momentum that this earth remains in its orbit. Otherwise, there is a gravitational force. There is a gravitational force between the two. And this gravitational force acts along the line joining the two. Now, what this article is saying, this is saying that if force is in the direction of R, this force is in the direction of R. If there is force in the direction of R, no change in angular momentum. So, angular momentum will not change. And this is the reason that Earth is always in its orbit. Now, second situation. What is the second situation? Suppose R cross F, cross F is 0. This is the second situation. Or torque is 0. Here we are not saying what is its direction. Here we are saying we were saying about the direction of F. Here we are saying suppose that the torque is 0. Then again dl dt is 0 implies no change in momentum. Or momentum is conserved. So, this is the condition if the total torque or the net torque is 0 on an object then momentum is conserved. This is what is called the conservation of angular momentum law. Now, I uh, will like to explain this beautiful example. If you see there is uh, a skater who is moving on the ice with both of her hands parallel to the ice then in that case the distribution of mass that means moment of inertia uh, or the rotary inertia depends upon r so when it is moving with certain velocity angular velocity by spreading her uh, hands by spreading her arms parallel to the ice and when suddenly it uh, it uh, um, suppose it closes uh, he cl uh, she closes her hands towards her body then what will happen actually in the second case the moment of inertia will be lower down because r distribution of mass and the distance r will be decreased so moment of inertia will be lower down and therefore the angular momentum uh, sorry, angular velocity will be increased because what I said that L is equal to omega cross I. 
so i is lowered so omega has to be increased so she can move she can rotate with high velocity high angular velocity but if what happens if he raises his arms vertically upward then in that case moment of inertia will remain same and so angular velocity will remain same so that there will be no change in the speed so this is a beautiful example of skaters so finally what is the law of conservation of angular momentum it is that if a system is isolated what is what do you mean by uh, the isolated system that the mass of the system remains conserved uh, remains constant and there is no external torque if these two conditions are satisfied then angular momentum is conserved this is all about the conservation of angular momentum for a particle thank you